For the past few months, we've been watching the Chinese Communist Party crack down on Hong Kong dissidents. And it is not just Elmer Yuan and his family, but also several other people. And I'm going to go through some of those incidents and the recent statement by the United States Department of State expressing concern over the basic human rights and the lack of thereof by the CCP in Hong Kong. So I'm going to take a look at some of the incidents that happened. But more importantly, if you happen to be in the Bay Area, on Saturday, there is going to be a Hong Kong carnival in Milpitas. You can just Google it and you will know where it is taking place. You may want to go there and express your support to them because this is a pro-democracy movement and you may want to go there and take a look at what is happening. So enough said now, let's take a quick look at the slide deck. The, we, we've been telling you about what happened to Elmer Yuan's family. His son, Derek Yuan, was called in for questioning a couple of times. And the second time, they thought he might be arrested. But luckily, better sense prevailed and he has been sent home. Nothing yet attached or anything like that. But the clear implication is that he is being harassed for being the son of Elmer Yuan. Elmer Yuan's daughter, who went for a visit to Hong Kong, was similarly apprehended, held in, uh, in prison for a few days and then let off. Again, they are trying to see how they can harass Elmer. Now, the United States State Department has condemned the ongoing harassment of overseas family members of pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong. Three people that I'm going to touch upon, Nathan Law, Elmer Yuan I've already talked to you about, and Joshua Wong. What are their stories and how have they been weathering the storm? Let's take a quick look at the statement itself issued by the Department of State. The, we call on the Hong Kong authorities to seize all harassment of the democracy activist family members by Matthew Miller. He goes on to say, this deliberate campaign to intimidate and silence individuals for exercising their human rights and fundamental freedoms is a further step in the erosion of freedoms in Hong Kong. Now, let us see what happened to Nathan Law. In July, Hong Kong police searched the family home of exiled pro-democracy activist Nathan Law and questioned his family members. They have placed a one million Hong Kong dollar bounty on information leading to the arrest of Law. Other prominent activists also, like for example, Elmer Yoni also has a bounty on his head. Now, on upon arriving in Britain, Law cut off all ties with his family in Hong Kong. Still, Law's parents, elder brother, were questioned on July 11th about financial help he received and then all three were later released. Now, in the case of Joshua Wong, he was in prison for two years for various um, you know, acts of crime by the Hong Kong government and now he may be actually put away for life under the new national security law. We pray that that doesn't happen and that Joshua Wong is uh, allowed to perhaps leave the country if he wants to and that the democracy in Hong Kong should again start sprouting and leading to something that will resemble what Hong Kong was before 1997. Remember it was in 1997 that Britain ceded control of Hong Kong back to China. Now, this new security law is suppressing freedom and it insists that the law ended chaos and restored stability to the semi-autonomous city after huge pro-democracy protests. This is essentially not true in my opinion and it's the same thing that the United States Department of State is echoing and it is called on Chinese government and the Hong Kong authorities to respect rights and freedoms that are guaranteed by the basic law and the Sino-British Joint Declaration. And the United States calls on China's Hong Kong law to adhere and permit people to express their thoughts freely. Will they listen? I don't know. I don't think so. These are not the listening kinds, you know, like the Latonke booth. They are not going to listen to Bath and listen and, and comply. But more importantly, what is really happening in China? Is Xi Jinping not coming to the G20 summit because he's afraid? Because remember, when he was at the BRIC summit, that was when the news of sinking of one of his submarines with all 55 members in the submarine being killed came to him. 
This cannot be just wished away because a day or two later, Prigozhin got shot down in Russia. Are these all related? I don't know. I am hoping that somebody can connect the dots with logic and facts. At this point of time, they look isolated. But think about it this way. If the United States, which has been applying pressure on China, wants to prove a point, this is exactly how they would do it. By showing Russia what is, uh, you know, they, they have basically forced Russia's hand as far as Wagner army is concerned. And now we are hearing that not just in Niger, but in Gabon also, there's a coup. What's going to happen in Africa, we will cover in a few days time with Professor R.B. But for now, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications.